everyone, welcome to Get Better TV. I'm Michael Fear. Today's special guest is Matt Fuqua of the popular Christian band, The Afters. They've got popular songs out right now. They've got uh, Lift Me Up, uh, Light Up the Sky, and the one you've probably heard on the radio in the last couple days, Every Good Thing. He has some great advice for young Christians all throughout the world. So I hope you enjoy. First, I want to say congratulations on every good thing. I mean, it's, you can't turn on the radio right now without hearing it. One of the top songs on, uh, you know, every chart. But I just want to ask you kind of like, you know, what's it feel like to have a song that, um, you know, and you've had more, you know, more than just this. What's it feel like to have a song that you turn on the radio, you hear it, it's at the top of the charts. You know, what's that feeling like? Uh, it's a really, it's a, it's a great feeling. Um, I remember the first time I heard one of our songs on the radio and I remember just freaking out, just <laughs> going crazy. Um, and I guess I'm a little more used to it now, um, you know, many, many years later and many songs on the radio later, but, um, you know, I think the coolest thing about it, um, there's two, two, uh, there's two things I would say. One is, Whenever we're in the car and one of my songs comes on the radio, my kids go crazy, and I think that's just fun to watch them. They're like, oh, dude, it's your song. It's, it's like, really exciting for them. The other thing I think um, that's really cool um, is just to hear back from people um, the, and, and hearing the way, you know, our songs have impacted them. Um, a lot of times in ways that, you know, you couldn't imagine, you know, like we, we write songs about our lives and our friends and the things that we're going through and, and uh, the place that we are in our lives. And sometimes that, that speaks something very different um, to other people. And so it's really cool to, to see people in a completely different situation um, and maybe going through something completely different um, than, than we are when we write, you know, a, a, you know, songs like that and see how, you know, God speaks to them through that it's, it's a really cool that's a really cool when because so, so i hear my song on the radio and i think this is god's using this in someone's life right now in a way in a way that i couldn't even imagine no it's kind of funny you said that actually the next question i was going to ask you is um you know there's a lyric in every good thing it's actually the what you start the song off with and it says i, I tend to be busier than i should be uh, i tend to right. think that time is going to wait for me you know sometimes i forget and take for granted that this is a beautiful life we live uh, uh-huh. For me personally, that's a good reminder because, you know, I feel like I'm always busy. I'm always doing something. Um, so, yeah. I mean, that's just a good I reminder mean, we, for me. I was going to say, where did that lyric come from, kind of the inspiration behind it? Well, I mean, we, you know, your your situation is is very typical of, you know, just Americans in general. And when I, when I look at my, even my own life, which I try to, you know, I try to live a very simple life. But, you know, I find myself going from soccer practice to soccer practice to, uh, you know, Bible study to church thing to work and really not leaving any time, not, not, no time just to like stop and smell the roses to, you know, to coin a phrase. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I think that we get so busy, you know, with our lives and not necessarily doing bad things, um, but we just get so busy in general that, um, we don't really enjoy life, you know, and, and the Bible says that God came to give us life more abundant, you know, and I think that means a lot of things, but one of the things that I, I think it means is that he wants us to enjoy, um, you know, the, the, the life that we have. He wants to enjoy, he wants us to enjoy watching our kids grow up. He wants us to, um, you know, take in the beauty of his creation, um, just things like that, and, and I think we, we keep ourselves too busy and we let all those things just kind of float on by. And we get we're just focused on you know making money and climbing the corporate ladder and the social ladder and all these other things. So that's kind of what I, I, you know where it came from. Came from. No, that's good. And actually, one thing I thought was interesting I read um, on your guys' website that you guys actually started the band you and Josh while you were working at Starbucks. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, you know, I mean, well, I guess what made you start the band? You know, did you ever envision it getting to this level? <laughs> Um, you know, when you, when you, um, when you're a musician, when you, when you, when, when God puts music in your heart and he puts lyrics in your, in your mind and you, like, like for me, it's just, it's so, it's so natural to 
sing and to play music and to write music, to write songs, to write lyrics, well, all those things, like I did, I did all of those things before I ever even thought about music as a career. Um, so, you know, when Josh and I started playing together at Starbucks, it was out of, it was out of boredom. We would just, we had nothing better to do because we would open the store and so we were, you know, there would be an hour where no one would come in and we would just be standing there and, you know, talking and, you know, after so many days of just talking, you, you can, uh, you can start to run out of things to say, especially when you're really tired. So we started bringing our guitars and started playing together and singing together. And so it was just really, it was just a real natural progression for us to, you know, kind of form a band. And, um, you know, at that, at that point in time, I, it wasn't even on my radar to do music for a living. I was just assuming that I would, you know, go to college and graduate and get a job working for the man. And you know what I mean? Like that's, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know that, that that's realistic, I think. Um, and really God just, God just really paved the way for us to, to do this. And so our, our hobby kind of became a part-time job. And at a certain point I realized that, that, you know, my part-time job was really slowly becoming a full-time job. And um, so it was just really, uh, it was really organic, you know. It's not like, uh, you know, we, we were a finalist on American Idol and we got a record deal or something. We we literally, like, played everywhere that would have us for, you know, years and years and years uh, and saved all of our pennies to, you know, make a record and, you know, make T-shirts and stuff like that. It's it's a it's a real classic story. So no, I never really thought I, I would. It just kind of happened. Just it just kind of happened that we that we did that we are where we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's actually good because um, you know, I, our website is getbetteretoday.com. Our whole concept is you know trying to improve, get better every day. You know, whatever that field of you know your interest is. And you just mentioned that you you know you played everywhere you could. Um, maybe some more advice, like as far as what you, you know, other than playing everywhere, what's some things you guys did, I guess, to get uh, to this level? Obviously, God had a hand in it, you know, as well, but uh, maybe some yeah, I mean, you know, I other think, things. I think these, all of these things that we aspire to, I, I, especially when the odds are stacked against you, um, like doing music for a living or being a professional athlete or an Olympian or things like that, you know, the, the odds of, of you being successful in, in a lot of these type of things are are terrible, you know. Um uh they're you know, I feel like if if you are gonna if you're gonna be a professional musician or a professional athlete or any of these type of things, um the only way you're gonna get there is if that's got a plan for you. So I mean the first thing I would do uh, you know, my my first um you know word of advice to people who ask me uh is um you know, really, really search your own heart and and do a lot of prayer and and figure out if this if if you really think this is where God's calling you. And if it is, He'll make a way. Um, but the the second thing I would say is, um, you know, that that uh, outside of that is that you, you know, you 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 control your own destiny as far as um, as far as like. You're, it's not going to be handed to you, you know, it's, it's like, I know, I know nobody in this business that didn't work for years and years and years. And even the, even the stories that look like an overnight success, uh, were, were built on usually over a decade of, of really hard work, um, Mm -hmm. and, and risk, honestly. Um, so I would say if you're, you know, if you're aspiring to, to what we do, is to write songs every day, to play your instrument every day, um, to hone your craft, as, as, as we like to say. So, um, you know, there's there's no substitute for for hard work, um, and there's no substitute for, for you know for practice for all of these things. Um, that's that that uh, those are the you know the the tools of of the trade, you know, writing and playing and singing and all those things. So, uh, you know, work, work hard at, at honing your craft. No, that's that's excellent advice. Um, I was actually going to ask you what's one last piece of advice, but I think that's some great things there. So I kind of want to end on one last question. Um, you know, I'm kind of like on the outside. I listen to your songs on the radio. I go to my iPhone, um, you know, iTunes, stuff like that, on YouTube. 
but you know, I don't really know what it's like to do it. So for you know our viewers that they listen to Kayla, they listen to the Way FM, um, what's it like being a band traveling, playing music, you know, all the time? <laughs> well, a lot of traveling, I'm sure. It's like I always describe it as Groundhog Day. <laughs> You've seen the movie Groundhog Day, the old Bill Murray movie. It's um, like. No, I don't know if I've seen it, but I know what you're talking about. Well, it's like he he gets it's it's obviously fiction, but it's like some somehow he gets caught living the same day over again. So every day he wakes <laughs> up exactly at the same time, and the same song is playing on the radio. And he you know walks onto the street, and the same you know woman is walking her dog, and the same you know car bumps into the one in front of it at the stop sign at the same time every day. It's kind of like that, you know. It, it's like we do the, our routine is exactly the same every day. It's just in a different city, and oftentimes our days are so full, uh, you know, whether it's uh, you know sound check or um, you know working out or you know doing doing whatever. And the only difference is. Um, you know, because you're with the same crew, the same bands, the same everything. The only difference is it's a different city, but sometimes you don't even get to leave the venue, so you you can't really tell that it's a different city. It feels like the same. You're living the same day over and over again. You know, um, yeah. but you know, the, on on the on the rare occasion that we we have an off day in a city like New York or San Francisco or or London, or Brussels, or uh, Amsterdam. You know, you never know. Like, we, we, we go all over the world. And so every once in a while, we'll have an off day in, a, in a, just a really cool place, and, you know, we get to walk around. And So it's not all it's not all work, but it's not all, uh, you know, glitz and glamour either. Um, but it's fun, I think, if you, if you, like, um, if you like living out of a suitcase and um, not seeing your family a lot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, now there, there's definitely uh, there's definitely some perks. Um, you, 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 it's a different life. It's a completely different lifestyle uh, as as far as um, the way you live. You know, most people, um, you know, most most people fly you know once or twice a year, and a lot of and a lot of people never leave. I've read some statistics somewhere that that said that um, some inordinate amount of people, like seventy percent of Americans never leave the city that they were born in. And they say never leave the city. It's like they never leave like a 100-mile radius of, of the city that they were born in or something like that. It's crazy. Yeah, that didn't surprise me. Um, so it's very it's very different. Um, you know, I've seen the U.S. six, seven times over. Um, you know, I've, I've been to um, all, you know, all kinds of different countries overseas, South America, um, Europe, and... Uh, it, it's really, it, it's really cool. I, I, I love, I love that my, uh, you know, my my world view has changed. Um, just you know, seeing other parts of the other parts of the world, going to third world countries and seeing the way they live, and um, thinking about how they how they see the gospel compared to how we see the gospel. And I don't mm-hmm. know, it's it's very interesting. Uh, it, it, it's um, it it completely reorients the way you you kind of look at the world, um, and I love that perspective. And I, I'm so thankful. Uh, I'm so thankful for the opportunity to do something that I love uh, for a living, and that that thing happens to uh, make an impact for God's kingdom. So I'm very blessed. <laughs> 